All right, in this video, we're going to be going through the manual muscle test of our rectus abdominis today. First of all, we're just going to talk a little bit about its actions, because again, there's quite a bit going on with rectus abdominis. So the lower portion of rectus abdominis is going to be involved in this full posterior pelvic tilt, as it basically is bringing the pubic bone up towards your ribs. So in a lot of cases, even if you were to try to lift your legs up off the table a little bit for me, you're going to get a little bit of that tilt. Good. And let's bring that down. That often contracts a little bit more of those lower abdominals versus if we were to get them to do a little bit of a crunch. Good. That will be bringing those ribs inferiorly, what is what is flexion of the trunk and spinal joints. So for this manual muscle test component of it, we're really going to focus more on the upper portion coming towards. You can, however, neutralize some of the pelvis by lifting the legs up. So we'll show you both variations and just so you can see a difference in the body here. So we're going to start off with an active range of motion, which basically means I'm going to ask my partner to lift the head, neck, torso, and both shoulders up off the table. Just give me a second. Um, and so that both shoulders clear the table. So basically you can place your hand right underneath their scapulas. And that's going to be showing a ROM. It is not a full sit-up. I'm going to help you up with this one. This is not a complete a ROM because in that case, you're getting a lot of hip flexion inside that, which is not what rectus abdominis does. Okay, so basically just a crunch. Whenever you're ready, just lift your head and shoulders up. Good. And there's our active range of motion. And you can go back down. So you can see quite a bit of active shaking within there. He's still able to complete this action. So you're getting definitely a three out of five on your manual muscle test, um, but depending on how much resistance and how much before he would be basically weakened and going back towards the table is what we're gonna evaluate next in the break test. So for this break test, you're gonna ask them to clear their shoulders up off the table. So he's gonna sit up. I'm gonna go bilateral shoulders and try to push him back down towards the table. And again, that's five second, four, three, two, one, good. So he's able to sustain that five second contraction even with my pressure pushing him down, but obviously still having some shaking within the muscle. So we're definitely in that four range. And lastly, again, I'm gonna put my hands in the exact same spot and he's gonna push up against my resistance as much as he can through that motion, up, 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 good. And we'll bring him back down. So there's the concentric component of that. So that is the typical way of trying to do a crunch resistance for rectus abdominis. As I said, in some cases, what you can do is you can get the person to put their feet flat on the table, so both legs. This is basically starting to neutralize the pelvis a little bit, giving you a little bit of that posterior pelvic tilt. And then again, you can see if they can do that crunch component of it. And sometimes this makes it a little bit easier and you can see we're getting less shaking going on with inside that active range of motion. So if your person really, really struggles with the complete supine flat legs, can definitely bring them up into this position and see if it changes the strength of their abdominals as it brings the O's and I's a little bit closer together. So we now have turned our person over into the prone position, which is going to be for the lengthening of rectus abdominis. Uh, there's a few different ways that people tend to check length. Sometimes it's by hanging legs off tables or even using a bosey ball and trying to curl over top of a round structure, but I'm going to be going through more of what is a passive length, which means the person themselves is going to be um, doing some of this motion um, while the therapist themselves is trying to stabilize the pelvis. So sorry, I'm going to correct that. It's more of an active stretch versus a lot of the ones I've done in the past where it's the therapist doing it. So what I'm going to ask my person to do is basically bring their forearms up in front of them and they're going to post up on their hands, almost doing a push up. So what you're looking for here is as they push up and you can go even further, the whole pelvis is starting to lift up off the table, which is what we don't want. So we're going to ask him to go back down. I'm going to be placing my hand over top of the sacrum and the pelvis here, trying to neutralize the origin component of it. And then again, I'm going to ask him to lift up. And as soon as I start to feel a lot of pressure, so right in through here, we're going to go back down a little bit. Right in here is the length of rectus abdominis. So that is going to be how you evaluate how elongated it can get before the pelvis starts to lift up and you can come back down. So that is our length assessment for rectus abdominis today.